This is every trade. The SCS of construction. Behind the build. Episode 52. Welcome back. First and foremost, thank you to everybody that's watched Wednesday's video. Um, I was a little bit nervous because I was just putting myself out there. It took me a while to get used to having Hollywood stood quite far back from me and talking to camera. It took me a while to get used to that. But to actually hold a camera in a true vlogging style so close, um, it just feels really unnatural, especially when you're dealing with this bad boy undercarriage. Cheers, mum. So, yeah. It seems like a lot of you guys really do appreciate that more raw style content. So we're not gonna move away from what we like doing, which is getting that really polished stuff, the drone shots, the montage stuff that I just love putting together. But I am gonna try and get back to my roots, as they say, and uh, be a bit more vlogging style. I'm trying to check in as the, as the day progresses. I think the last few months, business comes first always then youtube comes second but it's not that hard just to hold up a camera and just say right this is what i'm up to this is the problem i've got and maybe do a bit more of this car stuff because i spend half my life in a car traveling about so yeah i'm going to try and do a little bit more what i did notice and i sort of played on it with the title of the video about the new yard and not being able to say because i knew i'd get some grief for copying mr louisey however wasn't that bad there's a couple of uh clever comments about copying but it's almost like people think that i set up this business when i set the youtube channel up it's almost like i've said oh ashville that's great d and j that's great i'm gonna set up a business but i've been around for 15 years in business and it's these people dave and d and j Asheville, people that you may not even, I watch so many channels me that probably not even got massive audiences, but I love because there's always something that you can learn and I get inspiration from those videos. Like, I can't tell you how much inspiration Dave from D&J has given me. And the brilliant thing for me is that Dave's been so open and I've managed to build a real friendship with him, I'd say, away from work, but to actually be inspired by what someone's trying to do for two years and then start it and then have that person help and assist you and hopefully it's not one way I try and advise him and you know lend him some of my experiences and that's because of this YouTube thing so nothing else that has been one of the most positive things that's come from this whole YouTube thing um, and yeah like Asheville has inspired me and continues to do so. I absolutely love watching Asheville's videos. I wish I could speak to him just to like, like I would any other business owner. I speak to multiple business owners every day. Try and help, some want my help, some don't. You know, and I try and get advice from other people. Some give it, some don't want to. I'm someone that believes in cooperation, yeah? Collaboration. So if another business owner wanted advice from me, I'd try and help, if I could, I'd try and help. Never at the expense of my own business, but I'd always try and help. I don't mind giving up my time. So yeah, I uh, I don't mind the comparisons. I probably in the early days probably did lean on Asheville's style of content a bit too much because it's what I'd loved and watched for like, what is it, three or four years now? And you just sort of like, if you watch Coronation Street, you know, it can, it can influence you. EastEnders is like Coronation Street, you know, it's the same format but the stories 
are different kind of so yeah but so i don't mind the comparisons but it is what it is but honestly, by and large the um the feedback has been really good what am i doing today so i'm going to hq now I had a late start this morning work from home again uh, my kids are off and my missus you know it's nice just to sort of have a bit of a late start but i've got a really good setup at home so i can work from home gonna go see the boys in the office because the full strength squad is back ktm danny the estimator that's too good looking to be on camera tb t burn west our kid j we're all in and um I haven't seen, we've not all been in the same place for ages. So I'm gonna go and say hello to them, have a cup of tea, just keep up my emails, tidy up, do what I can do. And then I'm gonna head over to the yard. And the plan is I wanna show you work started on this expansion into this new yard. It's moving pretty fast actually. And we've got some nice pieces of kit there. So I wanna show you that and uh, yeah, carry on like this. So let me know if you like this style of vlogging, this style of content, and you don't mind looking at this fat double chin, let me know and uh, I'll try and keep it up. But Hollywood is back tomorrow and uh, I want to get him over to Project 849 and really do a deep dive on that sort of stuff as well. But not sure what this week's episode is going to be like because I'm still doing the majority of it. Hopefully we'll offer up some value to you guys. We love you. Thank you so much for watching. Keep in contact with us in the comments hit us up on every trades insta every underscore trade it is mega getting to know you guys and putting this content out there and showing you our journey whoa this is like nearly six minutes long see you shortly so i'm down at the yard and this is the new part of our yard and have a look at this bad boy so this deal that we've done is a very very unique deal in that not only have we got the yard but we've also got possession and full use of this three-way screener keys track k4 had a look it's a monster basically you load everything in and it spits out three different products so what you get is you get the oversized stuff which will go straight into a crusher you get almost screen top so it's not quite good enough to use but we'll then bang that back through our screener and you get a smaller sort of 75 mil down product which you could sell the 6f2 or we could crush it and make it into a nicer 40 mil down product but basically this is the size of our existing yard again and if you come round i've got cousin alex on the camera here We've got this open that we've just made between what was our old yard and what will be our new yard. This is all temporary. We're going to resurface it all. It's going to be concreted, everything. We're going to build up these blocks. So we've got a full block wall there. So now I'm in our old yard. So like I say, for now, we've just broken through and put a bit of a hardcore stance, hard standing down just to give us a little bit of through access. But it is mega. And also, again, Alex, if you come through, not only have we got access to that screener but in the deal is this machine so now we've got two 14 ton machines at our disposal albeit that's just blown a pipe and the lads are trying to sort it now but dale is on site here trying to sort it out so what this gives us is so much more impact we've got big big plans for this yard as i said in wednesday's video I'm going to try and get some TB to draw up some drawings so I can show you exactly what the plans are. But at the moment, we're just working it out in our heads. And as you know, there'll be a bit of an interim sort of setup whilst we're slowly but surely investing the time, the energy, and the money into what will be the full hit. But we are going to have a full complex here it's going to have facilities for the guys showering facilities we'll probably put a little gym here eventually we might even move our whole operation here but i'm not quite decided on that yet because where hq is it's great socially for the guys they can get into stockport which has got nice it's up and coming it's got nice nightlife it's very very convenient for access so i'm not sure about that bit yet and i, I want to make sure that they're happy but yeah as you can see the boys are hard at it and things are moving this is exciting so you're not really going to get the scale from here what we need to do is get hollywood to throw the drone up on the drones back and we will do that but you can see there we were stood over there before where that screener is that whole area there is now ours 
a big part of it as well is hard stud with concrete so it's just perfect we've done a nice long-term deal with them and the deal is as well like i mentioned in the last video is that they're going to be able to bring their material back which is a great quality clean hardcore with a little bit of soiling because they are a utility company they don't even dig that deep we'll process it they'll buy it back off us and um, obviously anything else that's left is up to us to do whatever we want with so it's a perfect deal for everyone it suits them it suits us and yeah i've just met it's a real complicated deal because we've almost got two different landlords or we have got two different landlords i've just met the landlord of the existing yard and he also obviously is the landlord of the hard concrete bit you sometimes see it stood on and we've now done a deal to take quite a lot of that as well so we are, are going to have a big old yard when it's done i just don't know what the acreage is at the moment but once i've got my head around it i'll measure it and i'll tell you but yeah the boys are now cracking on setting up the yard as i say a bit more of a short term so we can keep operating but with a view and an eye on the long term <sighs> progress love it So I've had a really good meeting with the dig and with the landlord of our existing yard and what we've agreed to see this line here this is going to be the corner of our new yard our extended new yard so if you can see it's a big old yard so you'll get this hard stud concrete bit with all this here the existing middle section of the yard and the new part which will be our processing part so like I said it's three parcels of land stitched together but what that's going to give us is so much potential we're going to have a full fully working aggregate yard we're going to have offices based here we're going to have a processing bit we're going to maybe even start selling materials such as fencing from my mate dave and other stuff this will be a central hub it's perfectly placed as well just off the m60 motorway which is a motorway that runs right round the outside of manchester for those that don't know it's like the m25 in london so we can be here and pretty much anywhere around manchester in less than 45 minutes so it's absolutely perfect and to get it's hard probably the scale doesn't show on camera but it's absolutely massive if you look at a couple of our trucks there it's huge for us anyway it's brilliant so yeah big numbers what we're going to be paying is like three times as much as what we're paying now so it's a big investment but we think it's an investment that will set us up for the future and we can build this business just as we built the construction business and i am very very excited so really good progress down at the yard i'm going to make sure that we bring you this whole process of getting this yard set up which could be a couple of years we're going to do little bit by bit but i'm going to make sure we document it in full on the channel so stay tuned and come back because there'll be a little bit about this yard in every single episode i'm going to head back to hq now i've got some bills to pay some bits to do but we'll see you tomorrow preferred joining me so today again loads of bits going out loads of dust still off that mdf but there's a few things that are happening there's a set of gates that are in so one of our youtube subscribers come on called the office in manchester and asked us if we could do a set of gates now we're going to hold our hands up and say there's a little bit of miscommunication that's gone on here so he's dropped the gates off 
which we're gonna replicate. But when the inquiry come in first, they come in in two different emails, an email with two photos and an email with the description of what was needed. So the office have sent it over to us in Liverpool, but we only got sent the description, not the photos. So Mike has then priced up these two and then it's obviously gone to the customer they've come back on said yeah we're happy with the price da, 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 paid the deposit then mike's gone right i need a bit more detail here now because if you cop if i'm copying gates what is it i'm copying you obviously you give me a description with sizes and stuff like that there's enough detail on the email to get the quote done then the photos come in mike's phoned me you seen these gates and i'm like oh, i haven't seen no photos so then we were back and forth trying to work out what's going on we found out what's happened but long story short we've underpriced the gates massively now what we've said is to them is there may be a little bit of an increase just basically to cover the materials but we're going to do it at a loss basically we're not going to make any money on the gate the customer has said they're going to do a lot more with us anyway because they fit these as the, in their company um, and as i say they are a nice set of gates but we're not we're just doing them for free basically it's going to cover the cost of materials a little bit of wages but we're going to make a loss on it just because it is our fault uh, and we hold our hands up so mike has again looked at them today and i reckon they are a nice set of gates but we're just going to make a few slight tweaks to make it a little bit more easier to do in terms of money as well um but yeah one of them basically going to be a replica of them but obviously we're doing it for cost aren't we well it looks that it's way, a, doesn't it's it? A, it's a loss. It's a loss making exercise. <laughs> <laughs> it's a publicity stunt. Yeah. Uh, so these are the bifold doors, aren't they? They will this be. This is the sliding window one. Yeah. Same with that one. Yeah. Them two go side by side. That's the tracker, isn't it? Yeah. So that's the. That's that's the top. So yeah. it'll go that way round. That will be that high in here. And then you'll sit on your stools and have your pints. Hundred milli box section, and then the same again all the way down here so and then, cool. and then and then the door and then the door yeah no no two of them together isn't he a front door next to it though yeah it goes that way oh is it so that that's what you'll get then so they'll fly over there and they'll open there and you're going to get one i don't that's know the centerpiece there you get about 16 people all sitting there having a, a little drink yeah with a view to the courtyard so once that sits on the, the block wall Nice and straight, that becomes straight, and that becomes straight, and that'll all work nice. Yeah, sound. It'll all work nice. And then there's the doors, them getting knocked up. Yeah, these are, because these are only like, it's more a window, isn't it? So then what will you do once it's all done, then cut the joggles off? Yeah, there they are, there. there's one glued up there. So there's four of them in each one. So what do, you do for the, what do you do for the seal then, where they join up? Yeah, you put two grooves in them, and then they have a gasket. So you put them in afterwards then? Yeah. Just put them through the spindle. Once it's all been made up, yeah? Yeah, because you might have to ease them. Oh, okay, Obviously, yeah. we give some clearance, but you just never know, do you? Oh, so yeah. it's always better to take a milli off than be a milli too and small. And then send it through. Yeah, so uh, technically, they should have 15 mil clearance. You know what Deadly Devo's like? Deadly Devo. So they're, they're, they're half a milli oversize, okay? On purpose. I've no idea. <laughs> <laughs> so, so when they four go together, they'll be two milli too big. Yeah, but that's fine. So then we we'll have to ease that then. It's better to ease it. So then is that part of the same job? So that's the the retain now. So they're six point eight meters, them two, and then you come round and then you get a, that big door, which is the main door into the bar, and then. The big, the big proper bifold, which we haven't done yet, it's in there now. So, Deadly Devil. Oh, Disaster Devil. Dynamic Devil. Disaster Devil. Yeah, he makes an appearance sometimes as well. So deadly Devil is the best, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Here's Deadly Devil <coughs> with his tape. This is another oh, job that we're doing, two casing windows on. Mike's just been showing me there how you do it on it. Stormproof, isn't it? Stormproof, Stormproof. Yeah. So, you'll cut out the side through the spindle. To recess it back and then it'll finish so that's why when you put the sash up now it sticks out too far past because then these sashes will stick out just enough so it'll fi finish into there yeah it'll stick out about 20 mil so then what's that spindle going into it that's the block that will of course do all so that you put so. two blocks together yeah yeah to get the shape yeah so then that'll do the outside in one that's, the, that's that one and that's that one uh, okay yeah so which is basically that way in it that way, like that. That way, yeah. But, 
but these are internal clay, so it doesn't matter. Normally it will be. Well, just Craig, look at that. Way, so. See that then, Craig, then? He didn't machine them wrong anyway, yeah, that though. <laughs> so is that one there then? Is that it? That's the stone proof, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, there we go. So what's it go in there? Proper then, demonstration. In there, and sit like that. Yeah. Oh yeah, well, so I see what you mean, it's got like a chamfer back on it. Yeah, yeah. There's a bit more to come out of that, yeah. So then inside there, there what would you put like a draft strip then? Yeah, the draft strip, that's what that grooves for. Yeah. That's, that that, that's thick as well, he's just showing you. The one we've got's only 50 mil, so it'll be thinner than that. It'll stick out no more than 20 mil. Yeah, it's going yeah, less than that. 19 mil, so something yeah. like that. So it's a stormproof case and window, isn't it? Yeah. Dusty today. Yeah, so that's it for today on Preferred. Uh, as I say, loads of bits going on as always. Them bifold doors are going to look great when they get done that job. As I say, the big bar that we're doing down in West Derby really will look nice. We're fitting that as well, so we'll be able to show once it's done and finished. Um, all the MDF furniture now is all done for Project A49. The last bits of it are there just to go out. That is a good little job done and dusted out the way. I know Danny's glad to see the back of that as well. And then a couple, couple of bits coming through. Devo. Dangerous devil, or whatever he's calling them now, start calling them that. But and again, that gate, the little mess up that we have, but there's a lesson learned on that. Even though obviously we are doing it for cost, it's a lesson learned in terms of the processes there. So, because we are getting a lot of inquiries off the back of YouTube and a lot of inquiries coming through every trade for preferred joinery, the way it's coming in to the office and then coming to us, it's just hard sometimes like you can imagine how many different nuances there is to timber sash windows gates doors like there's a lot of questions that we need to know and people ask and it's not their fault they'll go i want sash windows making sand what are the the cords and weights the spring balanced what profiles do you want what handles what hinges the double glaze sit them blind there's loads of things and when mike and carly are trying to get the information sometimes it's hard and people just want the price 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 so that's when most of the time We'll just give like a price out, which is sort of a guide price there or thereabouts with the information that we've got. And then when the job actually comes in, go people go, right, we want to proceed. We get the rest of the information we need. And sometimes you're like, oh, I'm gone. We haven't allowed for that. And then gates are the prime example there of that. Obviously, the email sent to two emails. The office should have sent it over to us with the photos and the email, which would have made a massive difference. But we are where we are. Lesson learned. We'll just do them for cost. Keep the guy happy. Uh, hopefully they'll use us again in the future and you know we can portray our models as a company that we are decent there is going to be a little bit of an increase but literally it's just to cover the timber and we're not making any money on it so without getting too deep with that I'm going to hand you back to Manchester don't put your nose on camera yeah. good morning it's Friday and I who's this what's your name Parker yeah Parker is going to summer camp this is about the 400th time this holidays. Why is that? Do you think your mummy wants to get rid of you? Yeah. Yeah, I do too. So I'm going to drop him off. Wait, what? What do you mean? You said that. No. Um, do you want to work for daddy when you're older? Yeah. Well, what do you want to do when you're older? Be a lifeguard in Australia. A lifeguard? In, but can you even swim? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. I thought you were quite lazy. Hey! No, but why don't you come and work for me? I'll make a business in Australia. Yeah, every trade Australia. That's a good idea. Yeah, so I'm going to dispatch this little uh, wrongen, and then I'm going to head to HQ and see what's what. But again, just thought I'd check in, get a bit more of a glimpse into my everyday life. Do you think I'm a good boss? Well, you're a little bit bossy. I'm not as bossy as mummy. At home. <laughs> I'm not as bossy as mummy. You need to start tidying your bedroom. Anyway, see you HQ. So that is Parker dropped off. Just having that chat with him there about working for me one day actually did get me thinking, like, would I actually want him to work for me? Like, it's tainted because obviously I worked with my dad and I now don't have a relationship with my dad. It's not just because of work, but work definitely that strain in our relationship for many reasons um, obviously you know I wanted my dad to, to come into the, the business me and my uncle Paul set the business up but my dad came along with my uncle Terry and you know it was that's my dream it was like they were had their own skills and that this whole I saw so much potential in my family and didn't think my family ever really had up to its potential because various reasons you know they did well they've all done well my granddad who's not with us now 
you know, did really well. He had loads of lads working for him, but for whatever reason, I uh, just didn't fulfil the potential. So I wanted my dad and my Uncle Terry to come in, but that changed the whole dynamic of the relationship with me and my dad. I don't know what it was, whether it was a bit of like resentment or jealousy, but basically, you know, my dad left us when I was nine. You know, he had an affair, you know, with another woman. I was the oldest of four boys at the time. And then he got this other woman pregnant and I had another brother, which, I, you know, I, it's my half brother, but I see it as a brother. I don't treat him any differently. Um, and then, but then I let it go because life, that's what happens sometimes in life. You know, my mum and dad got together young. So I'd never, like, I never was resented my dad for it. I just, I, he had his reasons. I don't think he did everything perfect. But yeah, you know, I had a good relationship and then we got into this, did this together and then um, kind of just, it really just got toxic between my dad because we were equal partners and I felt like I was doing a lot more than he was doing he want he would just do his job come to work go home and there as i was up late every night you know trying to build the business trying to save the business when it nearly went under and this that and the other you know it was just not right and i bought him out as i've talked about before bought my own call out and i got full ownership of the business and but my dad still worked for us and i really you know i tried to treat him really well and stuff but there was always this underlying something it always reared its head especially when he'd have a drink or something, you know, I remember at the Christmas party once, he, you know, he was pretty nasty to me and he just, he just wasn't great and then it really came to a head at a family wedding about two years ago and he actually, he punched me um, out of the blue, it was bad really and, and I didn't speak to him for about nine months and in the end, I'm not really someone that holds grudges but in the end I just thought, you know what, and I heard that on the grapevine he wasn't doing very well he, you know he'd struggling to find work because he had a good deal with us we looked after him and then um, took him back forgive him it was fine you know made our peace moved on from it and then basically at the start of this year one day just we, were, we were, my brothers and stuff were giving him a bit of grief because he doesn't really see my other brother has got cerebral palsy that I've told you about before it was quite a tough our childhood really because when my dad left Obviously, my mum, my, my youngest brother, Rick, has got cerebral palsy. My mum's his full-time carer, and then my mum got an idiot boyfriend, and it just sort of changed my childhood at that point. There. I'd say my innocence was taken at that point, at like the, I think it was like the age of 12, 13, and I feel like everything changed for me then. But I channeled it into something positive, and it, that's what I think has given me this, you know, the ability to be a good leader, be strong, be resilient, if it wasn't for that you are a product of your environment and I could have gone either way we lived on a council estate we didn't have much money my mum had this toxic relationship you know and it was just you know but it it turned out alright and you know and everything that I have built is because of that so I don't resent my childhood at all I'm, I'm glad of it but yeah what it did do is basically affected my whole relationship with my dad working with him and yeah, that's it. I don't think I'll ever <clears throat> have a relationship with my dad now. Uh, I just can't see how there's ever going to be a situation. I don't believe in grudges, and I think life's too short, and I get loads of people probably think that, but I, I just, now I'm older, and I've got my own kids, I just don't want toxic situations in my life and toxic people, and I believe that when my dad's in my life, it's a toxic situation. You'll probably hear about this, see this, but... I'd say it to him, you know, I have said it to him, I don't, you know, I don't hate him, I don't, I don't have any resent uh, towards him, you know, I wish it wasn't like this because my kids, I've got a granddad now, you know, they've not seen, not seen him in two years, but yeah, I'm digressing, it's like therapy this, the point is though, it does worry me about ever working with my kids, particularly Parker, I mean, I feel like I'm a completely different man to my dad, you know, I try and parent my kids differently to how I was parented by my dad and you know and and I also I want my kids to do better than me I, I want my kids to be more successful so yeah 
if he does work with me, it'd be amazing. I love the idea because I know loads of like, actually, like, you know, it's like in real, not prominent reality, but like Eddie Hearn and his dad Barry Hearn, and it's brilliant. You know, there's so much respect there, but a little bit of rivalry, it's great. And I know my pals work with their dads, and it's fine. And the dad, you know, I get a bit not jealous, but envious sometimes when I see like dads that idolise the sons and stuff, and I thought, well, you know, why didn't my dad? Why didn't I have that? But I idolise my son, and I hope he does hundred times better than me and I'll do everything I can to make sure that happens and if he surpasses me I'll be the proudest person in the world but yeah it does make you think I don't want I don't want anything to taint what really is important which is a father and son relationship so yeah he says like he wants to be a lifeguard so hopefully he'll be a lifeguard and he wants to be a lifeguard in Bondi Beach I think he likes the women to be honest but uh, I wonder where he gets that from but yeah a bit of a deep one isn't it did ask for more personal vlogging guys so yeah god knows where this will fit in but um i'm at hq now busy morning gonna crack on who knows what this day will bring but yeah sorry about that let's crack on we're on so i'm in hq and uh in my office but quit there's danny the man that shall never be on camera because he's too danny will you ever be on camera Shaking his head. What even talk? Jesus. So what am I doing? So you're not on camera, Danny. Jesus, man, he's so good looking. So I am at my desk and I'm trying to, if you can see there, doing a very technical plan of the new yard. And what I'm gonna do basically, I like to rough things out. I'm gonna get T Burn West to go and do a proper version, fully scaled up, etc. etc. of how it's going to work, but for now, I'm roughing it out. So I might put this on screen now, and you'll see. Forgive me if there's any bad spelling, but we've got all the bays. We've got separate recycling bays. We've got a crew room. We've got my office, like a site office there. We're going to have rear gates coming in straight into the yard where we'll process, etc. We're going to have a front main entrance where customers can come in, where the staff will come in. We're gonna have a refueling section. We're now getting fuel delivered to the yard, which is mega, because it's actually cheaper. And it's more efficient because you're not paying guys or girls to go and get uh, diesel. And then we've got a big workshop for Dale in a big kind of bean can uh, prefab building that we've got, that we helped with, with, with uh, D&J projects, helped us get that actually. Um, and we've got loads of storage containers. We've got loads of bays. We've got loads of space to crush. It's gonna be mega and it's gonna cost loads of money. But yeah, so I'm gonna rough it out now, send it over to the dig, let him sort of weigh it up, see if that'll work, see if everything will flow nicely. Um, check what power we've got, where we'll want the cameras positioned. So I want the whole thing camera so I can have it here in our HQ. So I can, even when I'm not there, I can see everything that's happening. I'm gonna have all that there. So yeah, but my plan is that I'm gonna try and spend like a couple of days a week there you know Danny doesn't think I will but I will because I love it down there it's amazing and I want to really get it on its feet but already it's we're trying to set it up and it's a chaos but we're already selling a lot of aggregate already which is amazing so yeah I'm really excited about this but yeah so I'm gonna rough this out then get it agreed and then get TB down there to fully site survey it and we'll do a proper set of drawings which we'll show you when it's done but we're already gonna start implementing this now over the next couple of months I reckon realistically it's not gonna be anywhere near like fully operational as it as it as i want it here now till probably early next year because i just don't want to throw loads of cash at it when it's got a wiper slip it's got to earn us money and we've got other stuff to buy as well other machines to buy but yeah it's exciting feels like now we've finally got something we can run with it's been really hard negotiating with the two landlords to get the lease sorted and there's a couple of existing tenants that have had to move out to make way for us so we don't upset them so we work with them and everyone's happy now and we're ready to really push on with it. My arms hurting. Ow. So thanks, Chris. Yeah, I'm back on Adelaide. It's still raining, man. Horrible. Uh, the only one good thing about when it rains, when you're still doing a live job, is that you get to test the roof out and make sure it's sound and it's not leaking. And I'm ask Christian now if it's all right, because he's here. Yeah. No leaks, is he? No any leaks, no any leaks, Mark, at all. So oh, good. we are doing well. So all the rainwater goes working well, yeah? All oh, the rainwater, dog bags, everything yeah. working good. So you see the kitchens are all being done now, waiting for Paul or Tyler to start doing the splashbacks. The black 
watch machine tumblers in black so I like this time mate isn't it so yeah extractor fans fitted uh hobs fitted as well protected because as i say over the years we've had damages on that and it's breaking and they're not cheap i don't think 200 quid or 350 they are to buy but kitchen looks all right doesn't it to be honest yeah yeah left we the sink the off sink. we got the sink yeah took it off the sink and it's uh, everyone finished yeah. painters stylers then we'll put it on put it back because what happens is because the sinks are black everyone's washing brushes in and bits of tile and adhesive and you just cannot get it off it just won't go so we've started now removing them it's all plumbed up ready to roll uh, but it's not fitted it's hooked back off but dishwasher on you dishwasher on fitted all good we checked all the cupboards yes all the shelf is all right all else now. yeah so all the carcasses are grey there yeah yes not, not the same colour as the uh, same wood like no. No, normally they'll do the carcass at the top the same colour as this in the pine, not the grey. Okay. Shelves to go in there. Shelves on the corner missing. But yeah, good. Much better job there by Ross. And what's happened there? Uh, handle, handle missing. Handle missing. So yeah, it looks good to be honest, happy. Well, better. So yeah, so we're in here now, literally. Tire splashback. Undercovered lights, getting it all painted off. Hold on for the extractor fan. Table, you're on with the table, table aren't you? The table. The table will go in. Uh, and then it's just hanging lights and that. More or less finished. The lads are just finishing off board and down in the basement with the fireboard. Outside's all done now, apart from back the gate seat. And back the, gate. And the vent, vent covers. Vent covers. Uh, so yeah, it's fun to have a look around the house. So you'll see there now, we've started putting the back on for the headboard. So what this is going to do is going to give us our shadow gap all the way around and then the led strip this is going to sit on this so it's basically stick to it and then it'll be is that what it is that yeah, you're using that one so the led strip it's going to sit in then behind and then obviously light up all the way around the headboard and you want to fix the clips to that yes not to there then no. on the top on the top on and the top. hang it and hang it on the top so the headboard will be fixed to the wall it'll finish just below there and as i say the bed will push in same as what we do in our other ones it's just that we built a frame to offset it off we're putting all these on now so that the painters can paint them in as well to give a better finish and as i say yeah that'll sit in beside there and then the light will just shine all the way around so i don't know what's going to look like yet so it's the first time we've ever done it but there's still quite a bit to do we're walking around here as i say we're tight for time now the end of the month the first of september is when these tenants are moving in and we've got to finish off get fully done snagged off got to get video and photos done like you've been watching us get done which is our finishing shots get an inventory done move the tenants in so up against it here christian lad so yeah it's a uh, it looks much different up here and down, down the ground floor looks well further on it well further behind and up here we're going to be behind the door there mate door again Paint, or you're gonna put a bead on or something? What's gonna happen there? Paint. Yeah. Need to push in the brush. Paint. Yeah, so there's a little gap behind the door there. We've seen them need to get sorted. So yeah, I mean it looks nice. So, as I say up here now, all the second fix electrics and plumbing is more or less done. It's just the headboard to do on here, isn't it? Paint yeah. is to do the woodwork. Finalize a few bits. Nice, yeah, electric right? working, sockets working. Um, and then yeah, the furniture. So looking good, mate. What's the life through here? Better as well. I reckon it looks different on me. Look, can you see that? This is definitely the sleeper satin. Two, zero, zero, yeah, four. Look, look at the difference. Look yeah, at the difference. The shadow, yeah, I can see. This is a Rikor 100%. Durable? Durable. So what was that one? Durable. From the previous job, from the 11 Albert Edward. Yeah. Looks different. I mean, it sounds, but it just looks a bit different. But this is it, 100%. You can see the difference there, though, can't you? Yeah, it's a little bit worth the shadow. Yeah. Maybe that's because straight on the plastered wall and not on the primer wall. So you have, to, you, have, you have to paint behind here better. Yeah, a little bit. Go lower. And we need to get the, all the marks off after the plumbers anyway so we need to touch behind the radiators a yeah. bit more so yeah i mean it's color sounds and then this time you remember the skirt and arcs same, same color, color as the wall slipper yeah. satin on the other job painted it the wrong color and that's to go over it all but you, you must you must have missed off the cork they must still gotta do it 
Just double check, make that packet, yes. then, please. I'll be next to them. Yeah, and then look. And the sockets is, I didn't mention to the painters, make sure all the sockets is there. Yeah, that one as well. That's what I need to do. Yeah, before. Yeah, them sockets, mate, they can be put your eye right off, especially when the light's on them. Keep it, make sure you check, don't Chris. Yes. They dropped it on. Well, where, where's the cable? Uh, been hiding, been okay. hiding with the plaster, so I need to check one of the previous pictures. Okay. Where is it exactly? So they dro they've not fixed it on and just drawn it? They just dropped it on them one. Is it right? Yeah, it's too low. So what me and Chris did, we've done all the measurements to work out where the headboards are going. So what we always try and do is when we get these made, we want them to fall in line with the roof. We've done them in the past whereby we've mismeasured and we've just give rough measurements, trying to rush them being on the pressure and it looks a bit odd. Uh, but on now going forward, we always try and make sure we get it right. So we always try and follow the pitch of the roof with the headboard. And give a nice gap up. The gap we're given is like 100, what, 200 mil, I think, gap we're allowing. Was it? Was it around, wasn't it? It was, yeah, something. So this is too low, it needs to move up, so the angle's right, but they need to shift it up for some reason. They've drawn it there, and luckily enough, they've drawn it first, but that needs to go high. So you're going to come in the morning? Yes, come in the morning. Yeah. Save it then. Make sure it's sound. It. So yeah, there we go. Yeah, one more. So it looks like it, they just, this is template. So there's me in there thinking that, yeah. luckily enough, they've drawn it first. It's just been near okay, it, come so it's been near it, oh, so it's yeah. coming off. So yeah, so basically, let's get that on. Let me out. It's only been pinned, but it's second fix pins. So um, yeah, there is a draw, basically. Yeah. So, yeah, but that's not them ones though. No, not them ones. So yeah. only been me standard stood, they both add the 360 yeah. on it. So it looks like they just add the 280. The difficulty is, <clears throat> what you need to allow for is the mattress and the base. So the base and the mattress need to come into here, but when we have a headboard on the wall, you have the cushion, and then you have a little back bit what the mattress sits into, because if you didn't have that, all your, your pillows that you're sleeping on would just fall down yeah, fall the crack. Down. So when you have your cushion, which is your finished headboard bit, that's why you have a little bit at the back so that the cushions don't fall down, because when your mattress sinks, when you're lying on it, it creates a gap. So by having another piece of headboard, all be with no cushion, just a thick, thicker piece, it stops the cushions from going down then. But then obviously your detailed cushion is on top, coming up, but again, too low, uh, needs to be higher. I'd say again, the 360. But yeah. that's basically it. Yeah. It's, it's just a right pitch. It's just too low. Yeah, it's a right pitch, just we need this uh, 360. Yeah, and then, our, and then our LED strip will go all the way around, so, doing this has made us check our measurements a lot better for the airboards, to be honest. Yeah. But there's, again, there's more work, like, and when you're under pressure to get jobs finished, little finishing details like this just take time. Like it's dead easy to do, you know, a HMO and just bang, smash out for students and just do bog standard stuff. But as soon as you start putting spotlights in, tellies on the walls, all bespoke furniture, bespoke headboards, en suites, different type of tile and laminate floors, it just adds and adds and adds and adds to the difficulty in getting it finished in a certain time frame. It becomes into more of a bespoke job rather than just a bog standard student. You know, it's like people do HMOs and because you're putting, when you're putting carpets in, like some of our professional ones, it's, it's easy because you're just straight in, second fix, no laminate floor. The carpet fitters will fit the whole house out in a day. Whereas when you're putting laminate floor, it requires a little bit more work and you need to keep on top of cleanliness. Hence why we've got these sheets. Then again, when you're going for special designed headboards, it's easy to just buy a bed, slot it in position. But because we're going for fixed headboards to give it a bit more of a feel, more work, radiators, the ones we pick, it's all piped in individually. Whereas if you just have a white one, just flexi pipe straight in, quite quick again. En suites in all our rooms, another level of difficulty. Mm -hmm. Tile the whole ground floor, another level of work. It's just loads of extra work, and it's our choice by doing it. But we give a better product off, but it just takes longer and more money to do it. So yeah, but nearly there, mate. Not far. Nearly there. So that's it for today on Project Adelaide. So still, as you can see, quite a lot to get done in the time frame that we've got. But we're confident that we're going to get it done. Furniture's coming in the next couple of days. So upstairs are more or less done. The painters will be working down by tomorrow. They should be on the ground floor. All of the work should be painted off. And then we can take receipt of the furniture. Down here, there's obviously a lot more work that needs doing, but it's just painting mainly a little bit of second fix stuff but it's all the hanging lights and the speakers that go in the fire alarm's got to be connected up as well down here and the tile is going to get started as well so i reckon within the next couple of days 
this will be fully turned around this there's only a couple of last bits Christian all that stand standing behind me waiting to go because they've stopped working so that we can film and speak in quiet and everyone's like romping at the bit to get done so I'm gonna hand you back to Manchester now let these crack on and when you come back next time on here it'll be a totally different job again because as I say this is a tight time frame to work to and we've got no choice but to get it done which is good I like it that way so back to Manchester so we are busy in the office love it look our big plotted earning its money because we've all no, got bad eyesight look at that that's another job that we've got coming up pretty soon a big loft conversion looking forward to doing that that'll be a good one for the channel that so yeah we are busy as i'm not actually sent you guys over to project 849 for a long time and as always the progress is moving really fast but hollywood is back and he is now able to produce one of his sexy little montages. So, over to Project 849. So, it's good to see that project getting smashed. However, we've only got about 17 more days before now and when the tenants are moving in and it's non-negotiable. If we run over on that project, then we get charged liquidated damages, LADs, which basically mean you get charged per room, per day, for every single house and it'll soon kill off any profit we would make on that project. It's never happened to us yet, we've come very close, but my guys there, Sean, Terry, Craig, Wayne, Warren, Tim, oh, Mackenzie, Bill, Andy, there's loads, like lads, I don't wanna forget anyone, but loads, and they know they are, they're veterans, we've done this so many times, and we know how to turn that project around in time and deliver for the client, but it will be tight, that is for sure. My arms how do people do this so yeah hopefully i'll get back once more before the end of this episode just to give you a full round of where that job is because i know that a lot of people are enjoying that progress coming of that job coming together but yeah it's been a busy little week and another episode where i basically made this myself let me know if you are liking this style the last one did really well on youtube i don't know if it's because it was this style or it was just a good subject matter i think people enjoy the whole business expansion side and learning about the yard and everything that comes with it but yeah i'm going to the pub in a minute but one more last hour of hard graft and then we're done long weekend so actually hollywood didn't go back to 849 he went to the yard which is good because it means we can bring you another progress update from the yard it is really taking shape and every single week now i'm going to bring you more and more on what's happening in the yard there because honestly i am loving it and i think you guys like it too let me know if you like the yard content but yeah over to the grab and aggregates yard because we are now going to the pub let's go
so that's it for another week at every trade we are at the pub the boys arcade ktm me danny behind the camera because he's so good looking tb's not in today but he's back next week it's a long weekend have an amazing bank holiday weekend guys back to normal with hollywood next week but again i keep asking let me know what you think of this format because if you like it i'll try and keep it going handy for the airport here have a great weekend guys cheers, cheers. danny b yeah man <laughs>